Hey, what's up, guys? I figured I'd do a video on this package that I had found in my closet. A couple days ago, I was going through my stuff in my closet and whatnot, and sometimes I order things and they tend to get buried away. <laughs> and so this was one of the things I had ordered probably like two years ago, and I put it away in a, like a box where I put things that I'm going to get to later on down the road. And I forgot that I had put this in that box. So I was going through my stuff and I found it and I was like, oh, wow. I, I completely forgot I had ordered this. So what it is, eggs from multiple different types of shrimps and other things that live in vernal pools that I like to fool around with science-wise. Okay, so most of you probably heard of those triops, but a lot of you probably have never heard of these other forms of freshwater shrimps, which are very similar to brine shrimp, except these don't have any salt in them. And so you could use fresh water to hatch these eggs. Now, even though they're freshwater eggs and freshwater shrimps, they still need a certain type of water condition in order for them to survive and thrive and all that kind of stuff. You have to follow the instructions like I have here for each one of these. So as you can see, you know, I have different instructions for each and every one of these to hatch them out correctly. Uh, they're very user specific to each egg type. So you can't just like throw them all into there and, and hopefully they all go. Some of these actually require a little bit of doing. They're not as easy to hatch as you think some of them because you got to really meet that water condition for these to survive. For example, I believe, let's see here. Well, the triops are a real pain in the neck to do. They, they require a lot of very specific water types, should I say. So they're a little difficult. Here's another triop package I had in there as well. And I'll do this, I'll do this on a separate video. I'm going to probably save these for hatching at a later date but we could do these first and see how they go maybe i'll throw them in my fish tank once they get big enough i can probably put them in there and let them live their life there they don't live very long but we'll re we'll go through the instructions in a minute but like there's one in here i think it's the what is it the water fleas or i think like this one the dry lake clamshell i think that one requires a certain type of water condition certain elements to be in the water and you can see that it's not just eggs it's sand and stuff with it that's so that water kind of gets in that condition actually all of these have a little bit of sand in them so they want you to add that in there so you kind of meet that water condition so anyway what I figured I would do today is I would start one of these and uh, we can go through the process We'll go through one at a time. I'll do a video for each one of these as I go through. They don't take very long to hatch from what I'm reading. So I should know within, you know, relatively three, four, five days a week if they're generally hatching. And if they are, you know, then I know at least I did something right. We're going to start with this one here. So I'm going to put this one aside. But yeah, we'll go through one each and one of these. And then we'll raise them to their full size and we'll see what they look like. And some of them are quite interesting looking. So, they're like I say, they kind of like in the brine shrimp family, but these get very big. Some of these can get as big as three inches from what I read. So they're they're quite beautiful when they get that large. But again, these are the type of creatures that live in vernal pools. It's not something you would generally just come across generally in the wild unless you're looking for something like a vernal pool. And that vernal pool would pretty much have to be like pristine untouched you know uncontaminated by man in every sense of the word it can't be garbage in a vernal pool it can't be it's got to be like pure it's state of purity you can't have any kind of pollution around these things for them to survive so i'm not going to read this to you guys but i will I'll, I'll point out some of the stuff but i'll just glance through let me see if how i could do this here i'll just run through the instructions so you can see you can pause the video where you want all right you want to read it for yourself I won't do this for every single one of them I'm just kind of giving you a idea as to 
you know, what the instructions look like. And on the back, this would be the back page. And you could order these. There's, I think the website's right here. ArizonaShrimp.com. You can order all of this stuff on there. Sometimes you see newer varieties of stuff in there too. So I haven't been there in, in there in a long while. So you may see things on there that I don't have. But this was pretty much most of them. And there's there's others like the winter shrimp and other ones. Those got kind of expensive, so I didn't order those. But I wanted to see how I would do with these first. And if I liked, you know, are they easy to hatch for me here in my conditions relatively, then, yeah, I probably would order more and then raise them in my fish tanks and let my fish gobble them up after they die. It would be good food feeding for them. And they may live for a long, you know, a long enough period of time where I can enjoy them in my fish tank. So anyway... I have some water here. It's not exactly to specification because they're telling me to use spring water. I'm not using spring water. They're telling me to use a half gallon round jar, which I don't have any of these items off the cuff. So we're not going to do the whole package per se. There's a thousand eggs in here. So I could just sprinkle a little bit in there and we can see if this will work with this water. Now this water is water out of my fish tank. So there's really nothing bad in it. it. It should be pure. There's no chlorines, no phosphates, no uh, chloramines. Things like that will kill these sensitive eggs. The only th other thing is, is the container is not glass. It's plastic. So hopefully that's not an issue. Uh, they recommend the glass for some reason. It might be something to take into consideration. But it shouldn't affect them hatching. They should still be able to hatch. And if they don't live, then it's probably because of like the plastic. I have to follow it exactly if these don't go any further than the hatching stage. If they all die off, then I'll know that the hatching stage was absolutely no good. Basically, they're telling me that the most important things to worry about is the water, which we got that part done. And then the other thing they're talking about here is the temperature of the water. It's got to be between 40 degrees and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That is pretty cold water, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You would be very, that would hurt your bones keeping your, you know, if you were standing in a, in a stream and you're standing in 40 degree waters, you'd know it. You would definitely know. That's very cold. That's colder than what comes out of my tap. 72 degrees, I really don't need a heater. I should be able to keep this right above my fish tank under the light. And that should be sufficient for them to be able to sprout. They do recommend a 100 watt. Where is it now? Where are you? 100 watt bulb. And I guess that's because they want to keep that water stable, the temperature in it. And then they say... Uh, the eggs will start hatching within 24 hours, okay? 24 to 48. About 80% of the winter shrimp hatch out of between 24 to 48 hours from submersion. So I should get results pretty quick on this. I don't know if I'll be able to specifically video the shrimp. I would probably have to magnify it because when these things hatch, they are very, very tiny. Probably wouldn't be able to show, but I'll try. I'll, I'll try to get it under magnification so you can see them when they first hatch out. They're going to be very, very tiny. They're going to be almost microscopic. So I'll, I will have to use some kind of magnifier. Yeah, you can see they are about 200 micrometers. That's, guys, that is tiny. That's like almost invisible to the eye. After maintain temperature, 72 degrees, they grow up faster between 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. They kind of like that medium cool temperature. 59 to 68 is pretty cold, actually. So I shouldn't have to worry about temperature. A place jar at a bright light near a window. Yeah, there's an, that's, a, that's another thing I talk about is the lighting. They really prefer to have natural sunlight. So hopefully it's not an issue with my fluorescent lamps. Hopefully that's not an issue. But they should go. And it says raising and feeding. And I got to buy, I got baker's yeast. It says add about a tablespoon of yeast, distilled filtered water, and pour into the jar. That's a lot. I'd have to add only just a sprinkle of, of yeast. These things are very heavy feeders once they start opening. So I, I'll have to make sure I get the yeast down here to feed them. And pretty much that's it. I mean, I can go through the little details. I didn't really read this you know, all the way through. I read through it quickly. What I'm going to do is add some of these eggs 
Now there's a thousand eggs in here, which it's hard to believe, but these aren't all eggs. That's like sand and stuff in there too, as far as I could see. So let's open this up. All right, so let's add a little bit in there. I'm not going to add much. Hopefully not. Kind of hard to do with it. I just add a little, just enough to see if we could get a couple to go. If I, that way I know if, if it at least goes, then I know I can use the tank water and don't have to go running out buying a gallon of spring water to do all of this. And hopefully that's not an issue because it's very specific on the kind of spring water they want me to use. And so I got to really shop around for that. Then I got to get the gallon jug and it's, I don't really want to do that. I just simply want to know if these things are going to sprout. That's it for now. Like I say, this is the winter fairy shrimp hatching. That's the first one we're going to do. And then we'll pick some of these other ones the next time. I'll probably do triops. I'll probably do that last. Uh, hopefully it'll be warm enough outside for me to do it outside in the greenhouse. So I can just bring, bring them out there. Because these, these are a little more difficult. I read about these and they can be a little bit more difficult to do. Red tail shrimp looked like it was pretty easy. These look like they were pretty easy to do. Water fleas, I don't know if you know what those are, but there's a name for them I can't remember. Diapoles or something they're called. We usually use those for feeding fish and feeding very small things you put in your tank, like shrimp, clown shrimps and stuff you, for freshwater tanks. And they need these kind of things to eat when you feed them live food. Also dry lake clam shrimp, it looks like it was a hard one. The try out bags, what I got, two of those? What, did they send me two of those? Huh, I didn't realize they sent me two of them. So I really only got one, two, three, four. I got five shrimps. I got three, I got four shrimps to do. And then I got the water flea eggs to do. So we'll do one at a time. We'll see how they go. We'll document that and everything. It'll be interesting for you guys to see how these things. But yeah, if you don't know anything about vernal pools, look it up. And you might want to investigate what a vernal pool is. You may have a vernal, vernal pools close to where you live. You'd like to maybe be able to visit those. Just remember, they are pristine, natural wetlands environment things. So you really don't want to contaminate it or disturb anything in a vernal pool. You just want to maybe observe it. Be real careful how you, you are around those things. Because you don't want to disrupt the natural life like these things would live in in a vernal pool. You don't want to disrupt that because they, they could die very easily. You throw a little bit of garbage in there and it could be enough to kill all of those creatures that have been in there for could be thousands of years they were evolved in that vernal pool. So, yeah, you don't want to mess that up. Just be real careful. If you do see garbage around a vernal pool, always pick that up. And, uh, yeah, look into vernal pools. I might go hunting for a vernal pool out here in PA. I just don't think we have anything pristine enough out here. For vernal pools, you really got to go deeper into the wilderness to find them. I'm going to try to see if I can locate some around here. And if I do, I will definitely document that. Do a little history and some, some science on that. You know, share my experience on the, on the vernal pools, what I know. I'll bring the books and, and we can do the whole, you know, thing on the vernal pools. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.